man's of the plot thickens as the co-conspirator of the Terra Luna collapse is revealed. We just found out that there's a lot more to the Terra Luna collapse than we previously imagined. We're going to get straight into this one because there's loads to uncover here. Plus, I'm then going to get onto the Bitcoin chart because I've just seen a new technical price target flash up and there's a lot of confluence on this price target. And you're going to like it. So we're going to get straight into that as well. First and foremost, SEC a couple of days ago charged Terraform and CEO Do Kwon with defrauding investors. First is, SEC, what took you so long, right? So we're going to park that issue there because on this one side, we know that the SEC is going ahead with their Operation Choke Point. They're really trying to strangle the life out of crypto right now. And one of their motives is to target stable coins. They've made that very clear with what they've done over with the Binance USD coin with Paxos. And they're making it very clear here as well. I'm going to come on to that for, in terms of their intentions. But also, let's keep a focus on what Do Kwon was doing as well. So the SEC posted here that Do Kwon has been charged with orchestrating a multi-billion dollar crypto asset security fraud involving an algorithmic stablecoin and other crypto asset securities. They then go on to say these included M asset security base swaps designed to pay returns. So those are the tokens which mirror US stocks and companies like that. And a crypto asset referred to as an algorithmic stablecoin. They're referring to UST, right? This algorithmically backed stablecoin that supposedly maintain the peg. Okay. So look at what they're look how they're wording this. They're saying algorithmic stable coin, because they're basically saying it doesn't exist. You can't have the algorithmic stable coin. And they're saying supposedly maintained its peg. So basically what they're saying here is that wasn't going on. And we're going to come on to evidence about that shortly. He said that they made claims that repeatedly claiming that the token would increase in value. For example, they touted and marketed UST as a high yield bearing stable coin, paying as much as 20% on Anchor. And guys, you know, at the time I kept saying, guys, this is so greedy. I specifically was one of those people in the boom. I held Terra Luna, but I did not invest in the Anchor protocol. Everybody that I know was getting 20% on their money there parked in Anchor Protocol. And that was initially where the collapse started. That's one of the reasons when you see these crazy yields, guys, just step back and ask yourself if you can't explain where that yield is coming from. That's often a red flag. We then find here we allege that Terraform and Do Kwon failed to provide the public with full fair and truthful disclosure as required for a host of crypto asset securities, most notably Luna and Terra USD. We also allege that they committed fraud by repeating false and misleading statements to build trust before causing devastating losses for investors. Now, guys, we can go into this full thing. You guys can catch up on that on the SEC website, but this is the key. They were not doing it alone. And we now know that it was jump crypto that was helping them jump crypto one of the biggest firms in the crypto space making major investments into other cryptos into exchanges we're going to cover that off shortly because i need to give a warning to you guys of where they're invested because if the sec go off to jump crypto now this could be huge and to put this into perspective they made 1.28 billion from this fraud jump crypto that is what's being alleged right now okay it's they 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 uh, gave no comment to coindesk when coindesk reached out but we need to look at what was going on if you made it this far into the video and you someday want to be able to read the markets do technical analysis trade as we are doing on this channel then perhaps you may want to check out my free technical analysis from scratch course over on Skillshare. For those who aren't familiar, Skillshare is an online education platform. You sign up for a nominal amount each month and you get access to a wide variety of different courses. I personally use it to learn all sorts of things from video editing to financial to using Excel and various other bits and pieces that you may want to learn. It's far better than YouTube on those elements because on YouTube, everything is about retention. Whereas with a course, you can put things in a structured curriculum. And that is exactly what I've done with my TA course. It's completely free for the first 30 days. If you click the link in the description, ijaz.uk forward slash TA to take advantage of the TA course. Let me know what you think about it and let's get back into this video. In May 2021, UST dropped below $1. We remember that. In response, defendants secretly discussed with a third party, which we're now hearing is Jump Crypto, that the third party would purchase massive amounts of UST to restore the $1 peg. As UST returned to $1, so they got back to $1, right? Do Kwon publicly and repeatedly touted 
to the restoration of one dollar. Do you remember, guys, how how enigmatic he was, how he'd come out and be this maverick on Twitter and everybody loved him, right? He was like, you know, your size is not size. And the way he was tweeting, he was acting like he was some godly figure, right? I restored the peg. What have you got? What are you going to do? We've got the next best thing since sliced bread and there's nothing you can do about it. When in reality, it was his co-conspirator that was just buying UST and acting like this algorithm. This algorithm was working perfectly and repegging the UST. He would celebrate it and tout it as decentralization and the automatic self-healing UST lunar algorithm over the decision making of human agents in time of market volatility. In other words, what the SEC is saying, this is not an algorithm that pegged it for you. OK, you were doing it as humans. It was humans in the markets making decisions that were pegging this. So you're going to the public telling them this is some algorithmically backed stable coin. But really, it's just you doing backhand deals to get that going. And we're going to come on to this because it gets even better. Let's take a look here. So what we find out here is that Jump Crypto apparently here profited 1.28 billion in profits before the 40 billion dollar ecosystem crumbled. Just let that sit in your head. So 40 billion dollars worth of an ecosystem was collapsing. But this one firm here felt it was morally okay for them to make 1.28 billion in backdoor investments, okay? So here's how it happened. So Jump Crypto was able to buy heavily discounted Luna tokens, okay, the asset, the sister token of UST. The firm deployed only 62 million to help keep UST price near $1 in May. So when it depegged slightly in May, the first event that it depegged, they spent 62 million for the benefit they were able to buy Luna at around 40 cents. Look at this blue section here that I've highlighted. There were instances when the trading firm was able to buy Luna for 40 cents, even when it was trading at $90 at the time, guys, $90. In other words, they spent 62 million and they were given 1.28 billion in, dis, uh, in profits by selling off discounted tokens that it purchased. OK, this is huge. We also know the Jump Crypto president, Kanav here, served on the board of Luna Foundation. He helped co-lead the one billion dollar capital raise to start LFG. The SEC contends, however, that Terra's stablecoin ecosystem relied on human driven marketing operations rather than autonomous bits of computer code to stay afloat. This is huge, guys, huge developments and just goes to further show that this was premeditated. This was a plan. This was fraud. But now why the SEC? taking so long? Why did the SEC decide to suddenly wake up and even go chase things which are actually out of their jurisdiction, right? We know Do Kwon's not in the US. Paxos, okay, that's one thing. They're based in New York. Go for it. Um, you're actually going to go and try try take some measures on Do Kwon and Terraform Labs, right? Interesting. But we know what? The clue is in there. The clue is that the SEC want to set a precedence on stablecoin. They want to class UST as the first security OK, they're going to class it as a security and they'll win this one because there's a whole bunch of fraud and we need to take that on the chin because Do Kwon and these mavericks of 2022, we should put them in a hall of shame. I think I made a video about like we should put them in a hall of shame along with Alex Mahinsky, along with um, the guys at Three Arrow Capital, uh, along with uh, FTX, Sam Bankman Freed. Right. We, we, we deserve that. But now they're going to win this. They're going to put UST as a security. And guess what? That sets them precedence to go after every other stablecoin. And that is what they want to do. Gary Gensler has made no secret at his hearings that it's stablecoins that he has a problem with. And that's what he wants to go after first. And it makes complete sense, right? If you want to on-ramp your own CBDCs, you need to get rid of the alternatives. You need to go after these stablecoins methodically. In 2023, the SEC is not messing around. 30 million pound fine for Kraken, ban their staking, having the words with Coinbase, they're going ahead and they uh, they sent the Wells notice over to BUSD Paxos issuer, right? They can no longer mint BUSD, so they've wiped out that stable coin. Now they're going to go and get the precedent set for UST and pseudo Kwan here, and on they're going to go. So loads going on there, guys. Be very, very careful. Not happy with how the SEC is doing this stuff. Seems very, very orchestrated on their front. But again, just further evidence that, look, this thing is commingled. People, you cannot trust these companies that you guys fly the flag of too easily. Don't put these people on a pedestal. Let your research lead you. Uh, and don't trust anybody in this space. Very important. OK, just a few of the investments. I just wanted to point out here that Jump Capital involved in, because if they get into a quagmire with the SECs and you're caught in any of these tokens, just be very, very careful. Akala sat here. Aptos, which we know has gone on an insane run. Now we probably know why. Chili's, 
Uh, you've got um, Serum, you've got Neon, you've got Solana, you've got Sui as well. So those are the tokens that they're pretty much holding. So you can see they're all of the same ill. All right, so now back into the charts here on a Saturday. And how is Bitcoin getting on? Well, late on Friday night, Bitcoin mounted a very important attack here on this hourly candle towards that $25,000 mark. And it did indeed manage to wick above 25,000. But we've since started consolidating back down to 24.5 let's see what's happened here we had a big run up here we touched down into some support here we bounced created a high came all the way back down created now what is a lower high okay so here on this hourly chart just be a little bit cognizant this is a lower high so what bitcoin now needs to do on this hourly chart is build support from this level 24.3 and bounce right just like it bounced from this 24 level hopefully it can bounce from this level now and keep its uptrend you want to see something like this and then go create a higher high very important that it pre beats that previous peak in order for this next move to sustain but that's not enough let's not just look at the hourly let's also zoom out and start looking at the four hourly because on the four hourly you remember we were in our initial ascending broadening wedge now what i've done is i've moved this lower band Okay, so I've moved the lower band of the ascending broadening wedge because what we were in before, we were in this one, okay, and we broke to the downside of it. We held some support here, which re resulted from this support here, and we managed to work our way back up. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to extend this and change this to a broader ascending broadening wedge. So it's a proper megaphone pattern. Again, if none of this makes sense to you, jars.uk forward slash tier. We go through all of this stuff. All the patterns I'm going to share with you now and some of these uh, that you're going to see here playing out on Bitcoin, you would have known them and been able to spot them if you worked through that course. And it's completely free. So now we're at the top of this ascending broadening wedge. Now, here's the interesting thing. If we can achieve a breakout from this to the upside, here's the initial, here's how you measure the price target. So we put this at the point to breakout. If we can get a breakout, this brings you to that 30,000 level, just shy of that 30,000 level. And this is creating a lot of confluence because what did I say a couple of days ago? Where are we fighting for? Let me just zoom out to the daily chart here. We're fighting for this resistance point here. This is the important level here at 25,000, 25,200 range. Once we clear this level, look how big this gap is up to that 28 to 31 range. This range becomes far more achievable once we clear this 25 level. So it's very important. You can see that once we clear this level, 30,000 does come into play because we fell so quickly from those levels. So we should be able to fill that gap to the other side. This ascending broadening wedge pattern is giving you confluence. Confluence is when more than one thing is telling you the same pattern and same price targets. And this is telling us that that is also playing out from this ascending broadening wedge. Now, what's the downside risk? The downside risk is we get rejected by the top of this ascending broadening wedge and we have a long journey back down to the downside. Now, it won't be so easy just to come all the way to the downside at 21,000. There will be various levels of support, including support at 22.6 including various other supports that we've created on the hourly chart as well but that is where we're sat right now here but that's not the only pattern we're forming on the daily chart we are forming an inverse head and shoulders reversal pattern an inverse head and shoulders pattern is also known as a reversal pattern it indicates that the price is likely to get yourself breaking out of this neckline so you've got the neckline here you've got your left shoulder you've got your head you've got your right shoulder and we're now trying to break through this neckline so the way this type of pattern works is when you break out do not be surprised to see a retest of these levels to back test so in other words what you're doing is you're breaking through this level right you're breaking past 25k you may need to come back to retest 25k from the top side down collect some support and then off you go for your head and shoulders pattern right that is a great move to trade if any of you guys want to trade that i'm personally using bybit and bitget to do my trades but of course use any exchange you're uh, you're happy with uh, those ones do help the channel they are affiliate links now if you take the point of breakout and apply the price target you can see where the price target starts to take you where does it take you Oh, no surprise, into that $30,000, $31,000 range. So we're seeing a lot of patterns now suggesting that this is a very crucial moment for Bitcoin. And if we can play these scenarios out, we could be getting a very, very explosive move on Bitcoin. And just to reiterate that once more, for those who haven't seen my videos recently, you can see once you clear this level at 24, 25,000, look at the volume, it disappears because we fell so quickly. That's why it's so important that we clear this level and we can get a nice break up into that 30K region quite quickly. But here's the thing. It's this EMA ribbon. And until we win this EMA ribbon, we're not out of the woods. OK, we are a couple of days away now. We are by tomorrow, one day, one day and 14 hours. This candle will close. And if it closes where it is currently, 
That is a bullish engulfing candle. Again, ejaz.uk forward slash TA. If that makes no sense to you, that's where you need to go. Hugely bullish, positive candle. When it eats this candle next to it, it's another sign of a reversal pattern. Okay, so on the daily chart, head and shoulders are telling us, the inverse head and shoulders pattern is telling us we've got a reversal. On the weekly time frame, which is the bigger time frame, we're creating a bullish engulfing candle. But until we close above this EMA ribbon, the bears have their final, final, final chance now that was one of their final chances. Two strong red, red weeks from the Bears, but then the Bulls step back in this week. Will they try come out next week to push us down at the final chance? Remember, if we look at the EMA ribbons in the past, look at this one as a great example here. Look at that. So you can see here, when we broke above our EMA ribbon, what happened? The next two weeks just threw us straight back down and faked us out. So you have to be very careful that the same doesn't happen here. We can close above it, and then the next week could be devastating to push us back down as the bear step up. So be very, very cautious. But at the same time, I would not want to be out of this market right now. I've been saying that for a very long time. I'm firmly in the market. I'm not chasing green candles. For any DCA opportunities, I'm waiting for some serious pullbacks, which currently we're not getting. If you want to find out what are the six altcoins that are completely unstoppable right now, make sure you watch this video here. Smash the likes. Don't forget to subscribe. TA course, cjars.uk. Or slash TA. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you in the next one.